Hey there, truth seekers. We're in my living room and I'm going to do some squat therapy while I share with you guys a story about my evolution as a holistic health coach. Behind me, I have on my infrared bulb. This is a common theme in my life every day now. I brought the sun uh, in the, indoors. So that's a near infrared bulb and I basically just spend a lot of time each day when I'm inside with that shining on me. So the story begins with me in college. I went to college as a double major. I was a microbiology and a biochemistry major. And when I entered college, I was obsessed with viruses. I was fascinated by them. Uh, I thought it was, uh, you know, fascinating that the most simple organisms on the planet could, uh, what seemed to me, destroy the most complex organisms on the planet, uh, namely us as humans. And when I got in my senior year of my program, I had a professor, and that professor introduced me to a theory. So now you have to understand that my career path at that point was, my, my intention at least, was to graduate school, go into a graduate program, and I really wanted to work for the CDC and do viral research for the purposes of using, potentially using viruses as a form of treatment for cancer, uh, possibly even a cure. So here we are in 2001. And I'm being introduced by a very um, critical professor to a theory, an alternate theory, uh, of, on how to explain what we see in nature uh, with viruses. So, uh, the, the Western world in general, so my schooling, uh, what the media will, will um, largely talk about, is a theory called germ theory. And germ theory essentially says that there's these viruses in the, in the environment and that they are the enemy and that we have to eradicate them if we wish to protect ourselves. And, and so germ theory is essentially, and I'm, I'm simplifying here, but germ theory is essentially saying that uh, as long as we can keep the viruses outside of our body, then uh, they won't harm us, right? So, that means as a, as, a, as a human population and as a civilized culture, if, the, if germ theory is the only theory to operate by, then we take a very defensive position against viruses. And so we create all sorts of behaviors and products and technology that will separate us from the virus. Uh, and this is also true for um, bacteria and fungi as well, all right? So germ theory says, you know, stay away from these guys, they're dangerous, do everything you can to um, eradicate the world of them and protect yourself from them. Now, uh, germ theory was popularized by a man named Louis Pasteur. He was a French uh, scientist in the late 1800s. And at the same exact time, a different French scientist named Antoine Bechamp was popularizing an alternative theory, right? And let's recall that theories are simply uh, explanations for observations in nature or in a laboratory setting. And so Louis Pasteur lived at the same time as Antoine Bechamp and they were at odds with each other trying to explain what these things called viruses do in people and other uh, organisms. So Antoine Bechamp's theory, which is now uh, you know, called terrain theory, basically states that we recognize that viruses are real and that they're in the environment, but that the symptoms that we call illness related to viruses are a result of the virus's interaction with the terrain uh, and the terrain is essentially um, the word they're using to describe the environment of both the human body internally and the environment externally. And so what terrain theory says is, okay, 
those things outside of your body, they're not the enemy, but rather they're here to inform our genetics of the environment in which we live. Um, no matter whether uh, someone is, is supporting um, germ theory or terrain theory, uh, what is almost universally agreed is that viruses are not alive and that they are essentially operating like um, uh, a syringe to inject uh, uh, DNA changes to the host DNA. And so terrain theory makes the argument that instead of the viruses being the enemy, what we as hosts of these viruses need to do is focus on the health of our terrain and the terrain in which we live. It is argued that viruses are essentially a software upgrade to our DNA, informing the organism, humans in this case, of, uh, of changes in their environment. And if we use the analogy of the software upgrade to that of technology, we all are at this point in history familiar with how when uh, companies update their technology and, and create um, fixes for bugs, for example, that sometimes those upgrades have deleterious effects, that sometimes the upgrade doesn't work quite the way they planned. And the same thing can happen in humans, right? That when we get the injection of DNA from the virus, then the, um, the effect of that upgrade is either positive, negative, or somewhere in between, and where we fall in that spectrum of responses is largely the result of how, uh, of the quality with which we kept our original software up to date and healthy. Now, if we, so, so what can't be argued is there are two very compelling theories trying to explain these um, non-living organisms called viruses that we see all around us. What's fascinating to me is that uh, here we are 150 years later and when I talk to people about this theory I have yet to meet a single person uh, who's familiar with it. Like I am usually their first um, first uh, person that's delivering this information to them. So that tells me and you that the, the culture, the, the formal schooling, the, um, the media, the general information at large is not providing us with all the possible, um, you know, valid theories that exist around this topic. And people are walking around you know, extremely f fearful of their life, and in many cases, um, perhaps they, they should be concerned. Um, but part of that fear is based on, you know, germ theory being the only thing that was taught to them. And if we, if we kind of take it a step further, if I'm a proponent of germ theory, and I believe the viruses are dangerous and scary and the enemy, well then, by, by extension, if that's my belief system, I'm going to really push for drugs and technology and vaccines of, and things of that nature to be created and, and pushed out to the public because my belief system says the viruses are scary and real, right? And they are the enemy. It's a great way to make a lot of money. In fact, germ theory, I would argue, is the best way to make a lot of money around managing uh, viral transmission, symptoms of viral uh, infection, and managing the fear that the mass um, population and public manifests in response to um, you know, believing that it is the only possible explanation. Conversely, if I'm a proponent of terrain theory, it's a lot harder to make money for sure, right? Because now my message to the people I service 
and my message to the uh, community at large actually is focused on um, two things. The health of the individual um, and how, um, how clean and, and um, not cl clean is a bad word, but how natural we keep our environment, like our world, our earth, right? And so terrain theory proponents focus their attention on creating uh, education and opportunities for lifestyle changes in a, in a person and or family's life. And terrain theory proponents also focus on the health of the earth and natural world because what we believe in terrain theory uh, is if you screw up the natural world enough, then you're going to kind of, uh, you're going to create too many changes too fast in the natural environment in such a way that when the virus upgrades the host DNA, there's too many changes, too many bug fixes, and it's more likely we're going to have deleterious effects, you know, harmful effects. So you can see how, depending on the belief systems that we, we hold, whether it be germ theory or terrain theory, uh, we manifest certain um, you know, behaviors and we teach certain behaviors um, based on those belief systems. As a proponent of terrain theory, uh, it is frustrating that, number one, most people that I encounter have never heard of it. Uh, that's incredibly frustrating because uh, this is not some conspiracy. This is, in fact, a valid, tested, peer-reviewed uh, theory that has a lot of traction, a lot of support, and a lot of very, very credible people supporting um, this particular side of the fence. And unfortunately, I live in a capitalist-driven uh, society, and money is sort of the thing that um, influences change and there's not a lot of money to be made in terrain theory certainly far less anyway uh, when it as compared to germ theory um, the money to be made in terrain theory is largely around the topic of health and wellness which um, you know would bring with it uh, you know other concerns as well with ethics depending on how the professional handles this information, but um, it's it's important to me that I get this out, you know, and that you know maybe more people who have never heard of this theory start looking into this information and considering that oh wow like I didn't know that there were other theories out there that were just as valid as this thing I hear constantly in the media. Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and do some research on your own. Uh, two of my favorite resources, both uh, are MDs, so medical doctors. Both are published doctors. And both are authors with um, books as well as great video content on topics related to this and other things that are sort of um, uh, health and wellness related. One. One person is Dr. Zach Bush, MD, and another doctor is Dr. Thomas, uh, Thomas Cowan, all right, Dr. Thomas Cowan and Dr. Zach Bush. So please, if this information is new to you and you've never heard of train theory and even this very basic simplified introduction video is something um, that piques your interest, please go, go look into this stuff further. I ran a workshop last night on immune resilience where myself, a medical doctor and a nutritionist got together and sort of promoted uh, our, our, um, our opinion and our, our beliefs around how to create optimal immune health. And everyone who attended that workshop, which was both in person and virtual, had never heard of train theory. So. I couldn't not make this video. All right, I, as a professional, very ethical one, uh, it's really important that I, that I at least feel like I did my part to make people aware that there's this whole other awesome, extremely valid, well-supported theory out there that you most likely, unfortunately, 
haven't even heard of.